Uh, you can go to https slash slash www dot youtube dot com slash user slash the city of Pleasanton. Public participation is requested that members of the public wishing to address the Park and Recreation Commission submit a speaker card. Uh, when public comment is open on an agenda item, individuals may speak once, once per agenda item. In person or at council chamber, submit a physical speaker card to the clerk at the meeting. Uh, when your name is called, please provide comment at the podium uh, virtu or virtual Zoom. And that is, I'm not going to read it all. Um, okay, call to order. Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for us. Edith, roll call, please. Thank you. Commissioners Steve Burbridge, Kara Ritmiller. Present. Chuck Deckett. Here. Lisa Brown. Here. Ramesh Amadi. Michael Vickers. Here. Chairperson Joni Fields. Here. Minutes. Uh, approved regular me meeting minutes. Just need October. to do agenda amendments beforehand. And while we're doing oh, that, I just wanted to let folks in the audience know that I failed to put out the speaker cards. So if you do want to speak, oh, Edith has them up here. Perfect. And I didn't get it perfect. Darn. <laughs> okay. Well, I was hoping for the last meeting to be perfect. Okay. Uh, so um, agenda amendments. I have agenda amendment. Steve. I'd like to move item number 10, the select commissioner chair and vice chair for 2023 to uh, the, the spot after item number four and before item number five. Do we have to have a motion on that? Yes. So uh, do you want to make the motion for that? Yes, I'd like to make the motion for that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Can somebody second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's passed. So now let's approve the regular meeting minutes of October 13th. Correction on... Um, Item six, number E, Sports Council. Um, Commissioner Vickers was the prior uh, park and rec person, but I was the one that attended that meeting and reported on that meeting at our last commission meeting on those topics. I'm sorry, which one were you? Six E, Sports Council. Page 10. Okay. Are there any other? Um... And then also on that, I was really stating what the uh, group as a whole was stating in terms of their preference for it being filled, not supposed to, not specifically speaking of my own opinion on the subject. Okay, those uh, corrections are um, added. Are there any other corrections or admissions? Do I hear a motion? I make a motion with that correction. A yes, second. Second. Okay. Second that. We have a, a motion that's been um, by uh, Council, uh, Commissioner Decker and second with Mr. Vicker. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, uh, introductions, awards, recognitions, or presentations? None from staff. Thank you. Public uh, comment from the audience regarding items not listed on the agenda. Excuse me. Are you welcome? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's items on the agenda. I don't see them. Yeah. Good evening. I'm not sure what's on the agenda. I have been able to find it online so um nathan would you pronounce your last name please nathan ibarra laza okay resident of pleasanton 
um, the an email was disseminated today uh, to the adult softball uh, participants of the adult softball league uh, at the uh, Mercer Sports Park. The uh, I think it went out just to managers. So I had the email was forwarded to me by my manager, and uh, the topic is the suspension of the softball season for the uh, year 2023, which is the upcoming year. And this is uh, was indicated that the season would be suspended because of construction for a, uh, a new addition to the Kinsman Mercer Sports Park, which I think was a cricket field. So uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't know if that was on the agenda tonight. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, uh, I don't know. It is not on the it. not on the agenda tonight. And just for commissioner's knowledge, um, we do need to to postpone or suspend or not have the spring season of the adult softball league. The impacts of the construction at this point are unknown, but it's looking like it's going to be a broader impact than just the area that we're looking at um, the construction for the cricket field. And so, what we're doing is we are postponing or pausing or waiting to see what the construction impacts are so instead of planning a league and canceling it i said we're not going to have a spring league this year um we will come back in the fall with the fall league once the construction's done but the construction timeline is looking like it's going to be right at the same timeline as the adult softball spring league um if construction impacts are less than we think they're going to be then we could do something at a later date, we can kind of jump in and do a smaller league at a later date with time for sign up. But the construction impacts look like they're going to be impacting more fields than just that one area to get just vehicles to clear, in and out. The construction actually does not impact the softball field. It, it doesn't impact imp other fields that, that would move over to the softball field. Correct. Mm -hmm. Can we can we comment? We can't tonight, but if you would like to um, have this agendized for a future meeting, then we can talk about it. Yeah, I would because when we all voted, we didn't want any uh, bad, uh, diverse impact on these other sports. Okay, but uh, but that will have to come to another meeting. meeting. Yeah. Correct. Yes. So you can vote to agendize that. Yes. Yes, let's so, do that. Let's vote. I'd like to, would you I'd like to motion? motion it? I'd okay. put it on the agenda, please, for the next meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay. So uh, thank you, Nathan, um, for bringing that to um, our attention. We need to vote on the motion. Okay, we have a motion to agenda uh, the softball, adult softball, uh, adult, adult softball uh, for the upcoming season uh, of spring and possibly fall, depending on construction. Just spring. Just spring. Yeah, it's just one season. The seasons have been kind of pushed, uh, they've been advanced further and further. I'm sorry, the seasons have been advanced. Uh, sorry to speak out of order. The seasons have been advanced further and further, so that they're basically spring and summer. The fall season's kind of pushed its way into summer. There really isn't a fall season anymore. Um, so yeah, so the email that I received said spring and summer would be canceled. So for us, that would be the whole year. That's our understanding of it. We have a motion on the floor. And a second. And a second to um, put this on the agenda for the following um, commission meeting in January. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I I think you can't, uh, you, we've already okay. done the motion. If you have any more concerns, I would contact the Park and Rec de uh, Department. Okay. Okay. So this be on the agenda for January. January. Thank you. Okay. So, so next on the agenda is, uh, information update on the commissioner's handbook and good evening my name is larissa cito and i'm one of your assistant city attorneys i'm going to go ahead and screen share this to go ahead and make a quick presentation about what's going on and classically it worked in the practice and now it doesn't <laughs> 
just a moment. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. So you received a staff report because the city council updated its city council rules and procedures manual and said to staff, you also need to update similarly for the commissioner's handbook. So we've gone ahead and made some changes to the commissioner's handbook to update it to match what's going on with the city council rules and procedures. And I just wanted to cover those with you very briefly. You also received a staff report and a link to the commissioner's handbook. Any commissioner who would like a copy of the handbook, please let us know. And I have, um, even though Chairperson Fields is, is going to be letting the chairmanship go to the next person, I have brought a copy for the next person in case that person wants a, a paper copy. So I'll pass that over. I think we've, we've all received, received, received it. Received yes. it. Even better. Yeah. Perfect. Which is fantastic. Okay. So what, what is going on is the council said, well, our operating procedures were in place since the 90s and state law had changed that we needed some updates. And then practically speaking, there were some meeting procedures that they wanted to change too. So I just wanted to review those with you briefly. So that included what you used to follow was Robert's Rules of Order, and now the council has said, no, we'd rather use what's called Rosenberg's Rules of Order. That's included in your handbooks. It's about seven pages long, and you've also been provided what we call a cheat sheet about how to make motions, and these are very typical of what you make already. You know, who's making a motion, who's amending a motion, things like that that you're very familiar with. Uh, it's just that the old older Robert's Rules of Order was very what I'll call parliamentary, so probably more appropriate for a body of about mm, 20 or 50 people using motions and things that we don't really need. So we're now moving to Rosenberg's rules of order. So that's one of the big changes that council agreed on. The second item that we wanted to highlight for you is in the commissioner's handbook, every commissioner individually may continue an item that's on the agenda, as long as it's not subject to a legal requirement to take action that timing. But the under the old commissioner's handbook, you could say, I need to continue item, I'll just say, for example, item five, and that would just occur. Now the council has required that when you continue an item that way, you actually have to state the reason why. So that's a change that you need to know now if you, if you decide to, an individual commissioner is unilaterally continuing an item. And then council also wanted to clarify that if an individual commissioner continues an item, that can only occur one time that way. So at the next meeting, when the item comes back, a different commissioner can't say, I'm exercising my individual right to continue for another meeting. At that point, after one commissioner has individually continued it, a further continuance needs a majority vote of the entire commission in order to continue it. So that's a change also, that you have to state the reason, and that procedure can only occur one time that way when an individual continues the matter. Another change that we're having now is how we count votes. And this might not have been an issue before in terms of whether people were always voting or participating, but now the new rule the council adopted is you have to be present and voting. So if you are silent, if you're here, you count towards a quorum, but if you're silent, you're not voting. Under the old rules, if you were silent, that actually counted as an affirmative vote. And then the other rule is if you say you're recusing, now that's considered not voting. Under the old rules, if you recused, you were considered voting with the majority. So those are different changes. And then always clarify for you, if you're recusing because you have a financial conflict of interest, you don't count towards the quorum and you're also not voting for a conflict of wow. interest. So just wanted to be clear about that. I'm not sure what the practice has been about with silence or abstention, but this is the new rule, present and voting. And that's one of the policy reasons council felt strongly about that for themselves in particular, was because they have moved to district elections, they wanted to be clear that they were emphasizing how individuals were voting to represent their district also. So that was a change that they decided to make for their rules and that's trickling down here to the commission also. Another change that we wanted to be clear is when you receive your agenda packets and when the council receives theirs, individual commissioners often have questions that you then send to staff and ask for answers. Sometimes the answers come back here as part of staff's presentation but sometimes answers are written, sent in written format back to the commissioners. Usually it was sometimes just the commissioner who asked, sometimes it was to all the commissioners. Now the council wants to make clear when they ask questions of staff, those same answers go back to all the council members. And similarly, the change has been made here. So if you send a question to staff about an item on the agenda, 
when staff responds, they'll send it back to everyone. Unless, for example, it's something like a personal financial conflict of interest, then that can stay individual. And we also want to clear that under state law, when we as staff share information with you before a public meeting about an item on your agenda, we also have to make that available to the public. So that's also made available on the city's website. And if you attend council meetings, we also keep that in the back of the council chamber so people can see that. So that's another change that's being made, which is if you send staff questions, staff will respond to you and to the other commissioners with those information. And the idea is that everyone's working with the same information, because chances are, if you had a question, you probably had a fellow colleague who had the same question and needs the same information. And that helps with decision making when everyone's working with the same information. So that's another change that's moving forward and captured in the handbook. And then the other clarification that the council wanted to make is when is the appropriate time for them to ask questions of staff or members of the public or of applicants? And when's the appropriate time to express your opinions about something? So they wanted to make clear in the procedures that, for example, when you hear something and staff makes a presentation, you can certainly ask staff technical or clarifying questions. Or if a project <laughs> proponent or members of the public come and speak, you can ask them technical or clarifying questions. It's only when the public hearing is closed and you move to deliberation where you should be expressing your opinions or feelings about something. So the goal would be to keep your technical or clarifying questions at one part of the discussion and then have the deliberation and your comments and opinions later on during the deliberation process. So that's another clarification that council wanted to make about the process for that. And then another item would be what I'll call matters initiated. So you just had an example of that that occurred here. A member of the public spoke, and then there was a decision to initiate a matter coming back. If, for example, a member of the public hadn't spoken, and let's say someone had heard that this was an issue, then under the matters initiated portion of the meeting is when you would raise this issue, and then there would need to be a vote on whether or not for it to come back when staff's resources are available. Under the old commissioner's handbook, there was a different process, there was one written process where you had to get it vetted by staff before it could come forward, and also an oral process. But here, the council wanted to clarify for everyone, it's just this oral process where you can raise it. I mean, you can certainly talk to a staff member in advance if you have questions, but raise it here, and then the majority vote needs to bring it forward. So that's the matters initiated portion. And then hopefully this isn't an issue for your commission very often, but sometimes it can be about considering items after 11 p.m., so now we try to make it very clear in the handbook that at 10.30 p.m., you're supposed to review the items still left on your agenda and take a vote at that time about what items will be continued to be heard for the goal to make the final decision that evening. And as you can imagine, the goal would be if there are a lot of items left on your agenda, if you make a vote at 10.30, the people who know they're going to be continued can then go home and come back at the next meeting rather than potentially wait till 11.30 and find out their item won't be considered. So that's the other goal about meetings. Also wanted to clarify, the rule hasn't changed that the chairperson is still the person who makes decisions about procedural rules with staff assistance. And there is a clarification that if a majority of the commission don't agree with what the chairperson has decided about procedure, mm -hmm. there can be an overriding vote by a majority of the chairperson's decision about a procedural rule. So I'm definitely available to answer any questions if you've had a chance to review the materials, but that's a basic uh, outline of the most important aspects of the changes of the commissioner's handbook. Larissa, were there any updates to attendance rules or is that something we need to clarify? I, I should emphasize that under the municipal code, there's always been a provision for the attendance in terms of the number of meetings that you can or cannot miss. So you can't miss more than one third of your commission's meetings during a six month period. And during COVID and when we were remote meeting, we weren't tracking attendance as closely, but that is now going to be what I'll call ramped up. Um, and so when we move forward in the upcoming years, we do report to the council if there's any person with a lot of attendance and you'll hear from folks and there aren't excused or unexcused, but there's definitely a discussion about, you know, when someone has to travel or has a family emergency or things. As we always emphasize, let your staff liaison know in advance so we make sure we actually have a quorum available for the meeting. And then if you're not able to attend meetings regularly, perhaps something's going on in your life that you know you need to, to sort of make a decision about whether or not you can really serve the community if you can't make the meetings and participate in decisions. 
So those are different things to consider. But yes, there'll be more of an emphasis on attendance going forward. <clears throat> Okay, so I've tried to end the screen share, but it appears I haven't been able to do that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. But now I've ruined the meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll leave that for Alan to figure out. <laughs> um, do any of the commissioners have any questions that they'd like to ask at this point? Are you open to a fun correction? Yes, please. Um, under history, um, yes. kind of ironic that in making mention that the our name uh, spelled the way it is is due to a post office error, but in that same paragraph, we spelled General Alfred uh, Pleasanton's name incorrectly. It should be P-L-A-S-O-N-T-O-N. Oh, I see. Thank you. There you go. That's some detailed reading there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Steve or um, Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to... Um, get clarity so the overriding reason we're changing the from robert's rules is the redistricting or that we're going to district elections and that's kind of been trickling down to the commission level is that really the the, the driving force on this i wouldn't say that that's the driving force for moving to roberts to rosenberg i think the idea of the voting procedures about your silence isn't considered a vote with an affirmative vote so they want you present and voting. So that is in Rosensburg's, and that was one of the interests because people, at least the council feels like they're now representing a district. But I think the overall issue was Robert's Rules of Orders was just very large and ungainly and not really suited towards organizations like cities. And the League of California Cities citywide had recommended statewide that people adopt Rosenberg's rules because it was just more understandable and practical, whereas Robert's Rules is... I, I didn't bring it, but it's actually a whole paperback book that's very hard to follow. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? I had a question. Yeah, I have a question. So, um, so when we sent emails to staff, do we need to pop everyone on? Oh, no. That's a really good question. Thank you. So what we're trying to emphasize is the reason you wouldn't do that is because we also don't want to create a Brown Act violation of a serial meeting. Right. So when you send yeah. your questions to staff, then when staff sends it out, it's kind of like when staff sends you agenda information. So the idea is this isn't creating a dialogue between you and the other commissioners. This is you asking staff for information, staff providing it to all the commissioners, just like an agenda report is provided. But, you know, the goal is not to hit, as I always emphasize, never hit reply all when you see the names of your other commissioners there, because you don't want to start that conversation. Yeah. That was the nature Thank of the you. question. Thanks. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Can you just clarify that this only applies to agenda items rather than other questions the commissioners might have that are not agendized? Right. So if you have other questions about procedures going on in parks and recreation generally, yes, that won't be shared with everyone, only with regard to agenda items. Okay. Um... So just quickly, uh, point of order, we got a notification that if you could all get a little closer to your mics when you're speaking, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't think this is a a vote. Or no, this is just for your information. Thank informational. you. Informational. And so, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you, Larissa. It. Okay. Uh, now we will take um, item, uh, let's see, 10, the commission chair and vice chair uh, nominations. Um, and um, do we, uh, Steve, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yes, is my mic on? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make sure I talk into it. So, yeah, so uh, thank you for Moving this forward, I would like to nominate Mike Vickers for the chair role. And that's my motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion on the uh, floor for um, Mike Vickers to be the upcoming chairperson and a second um, by Chuck Decker. Uh, is this a just all vote or yeah so you just ask for any discussion if anyone had any discussion or um or anything to add and then you'll do a 
or sure. any, any other, other nomination. Okay. And do we have any other nominations? I don't see that we do. Uh, any discussion? So is it uh, by commission or is it just by voice? I think I think roll we need call. to do a roll call on this okay. one. Okay. Okay. So Commissioner Steve Burbridge. Affirmative. Ava? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Ritmola. Yes. Chuck Deckett. Yes. Lisa Brown. Yes. Michael Vickers. As <laughs> awkward as it sounds. <laughs> yes. And Chairperson Joni Fields. Yes. You need your buy-in. That's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. Okay. Uh, the next would be for the vice chair. And I would like to uh, nominate uh, Chuck as he is probably the most knowledgeable about uh, items that are in the past because we do have new commissioners that might not be aware of other um, motions or other activities that have happened within the um, city park and rec. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion or any other nominations? None, uh, Edith? Okay. Commissioner Beveridge? Affirmative, yes. Rhett Mola? Yes. Deckett? Okay. Brown? Yes. Vickers? A strong yes. <laughs> Chairperson Fields. Yes. So I think uh, for this coming uh, year, it's starting in January, we will have uh, Mike as our new chairperson and Chuck as our vice. So thank you guys and uh, hooray. That was pretty easy. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Matt? Uh, we review concept plans and public comments on the proposed playground, uh, which is Val Vista. All right, commissioners, thank you so much uh, for hearing me out tonight. If you look at your packet, you might think this is a long presentation, but it's mostly just to show the different angles of all the playground equipment options that we have in front of you. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Val Vista Southern Playground renovation. We say the Southern Playground because there's more than one playground at Val Vista Community Park. And it's, uh, essentially, I'm going to follow the agenda packet that you have, go through the project background very quickly, talk about the two options that were presented to us and the equipment alternatives. And then I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the public outreach and the comments received and then how we're trying to incorporate those comments into the revised concept plan. And then we'll, we're looking for a recommendation from the commission tonight, and then we'll briefly talk about next steps. So the project background, you've seen this in your reports before. This is pretty typical of our playground renovations. Every two years, we look at our, our playgrounds and we determine which ones are in the most need of updating. And for the 21-22 two-year CIP work plan, we looked at Valvis and determined that the playgrounds there need to be renovated based on the available budget. We were focusing on the Southern playground. Um, we advertise a request for qualifications from playground companies uh, back in August. Uh, we received four qualification packages uh, and looking through those packages, uh, we looked at a number of things, experience, uh, what the playground manufacturer's ideas were, did they fit properly with the park, uh, and we chose Miracle Play Systems as the, the top design, um, and I'm going to go over those designs quickly here. And I think most of you are most uh, most likely familiar with Val Vista Community Park, but just in case you aren't, uh, the playground in question is right in this location where the star is here. Um, 
in the RFQ, we asked for two options for the playground. So we could present two different options to the public. And we also asked for them to be presented with different color schemes so we could get input on the color schemes. And we also ask about, um, hey, are there any individual pieces of play equipment that you could present to us that could be swapped out with what we're proposing? And so what you're looking at right here is option one. And this view is uh, actually looking north to the uh, playground area for five to 12 year olds. This view is also for the five to 12 year olds and it's looking south. And uh, once again, I'm showing you all these different views so you could see all the different components and we could go back to these, but I'm gonna try and go through these more quickly now. Uh, this is a, the, another view of the playground, and this is actually looking east. And then this is a view of the playground for two to five-year-olds, uh, another view of the playground for two to five-year-old children, and then uh, a final third view. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like on a plan, this is where the playground is for the two to five-year-olds, and this is where the playground is for the five to 12-year-olds, and this is the shade structure, the arbor that's out at the site right here. Moving on to option two, this is a much more muted neutral color scheme or natural color scheme. Um, this is the second option that they provided to us and we're gonna go through the views. The views kind of follow that same uh, directional starting with the views looking uh, north. So um, here's, here's the option two. You'll see kind of we have uh, this is this is the playground for two to five year olds. You'll see kind of the um, the multi generational swing that we have in there, um, and then the play structure, and then the layout of that. Uh, one thing I'll point out is if you're not familiar with looking at plans, the the play structures are these things that you see here, and this kind of outline of the play structures is what we call the use zone, which uh, needs can't can't be it needs to be on the um, the playground servicing. So. Uh, you can see it's it's filled up the site pretty well. Um, so these are the alternative pieces of equipment we showed people at the public outreach meeting and in our uh, questionnaire that we had posted online and then the two color schemes that we looked at. The outreach efforts that we did uh, are consistent with past efforts and, and, you know, recently we've updated that to reach out to more people. So we did notifications to all people within 1000 feet of the park and that's property owners and tenants. Uh, we posted outreach event signs at the park in two different locations. Uh, we posted the project on social media. And then we had an on-site outreach event on November 5th, uh, which was a Saturday at uh, 1 p.m. And uh, we probably had maybe a, about a dozen to a dozen and a half people that attended. Uh, the picture you're looking at is, uh, you know, us talking to some kids. It was kind of nice. We had a number of kids that showed up of this smaller amount of people. I recognize but, that picture. Uh, that's, you should. You should. So thank you very much, Chuck. Um, the online questionnaire, so we, we didn't have a lot of people that showed up at the park, so we wanted to make sure that we posted a questionnaire online that had asked similar questions to what we asked people when we were presenting at the park. And in past experiences, we've had a lot of success with the online questionnaires. And in this case, that proved to be true also. Uh, we had uh, 120 people respond to that online questionnaire, which is really good for it being posted for just over two weeks. Um, and, and what was really nice is what we heard at the park was very consistent with what we heard uh, when the online questionnaire. So the public meeting comments were that we, we uh, the people preferred option one, uh, which we were calling the butterflies option. Um, and they also preferred that color scheme too. So not they like the playground equipment and they like that color scheme. Uh, we also heard that playground should include music and tactile play. The sw that swing should be incorporated into the design. Uh, benches should be installed for the parents so that they had somewhere to sit while their kids were playing in the playground. Uh, we should try and make the playground a little bit more interconnected and we should have monkey bars and other climbing elements. So then getting into the questionnaire, uh, you could see it's 
very, very strong preference. This isn't like a 50-50 type of situation like we've had on, on some past parks where it came down to which one did the kids like more versus the adults. But um, this is very clear. Everybody liked the butterflies option one, you know, more than 75% and like the colorful color scheme much better too. Um, and then we said, hey, uh, what elements would you like to use, if any, to replace some of the existing elements? And you could see the element H there, which is the monkey bars, was uh, the preferred um, thing that uh, people wanted to see in the park. Other than that, there's a little walking pad thing that was kind of second, but still much further behind the monkey bars. Um, and then we thought we might have additional money for the project if uh, they went with option two instead of option one, but option one was more expensive. So we were wondering, hey, do you wanna see more benches or exercise equipment? Because we did hear some from some people that they'd like to have exercise equipment in that park too. Um, but pretty much the majority of people that responded said they they want benches and oh, then they- surprised me. Yeah, they said they want benches and, and you know they like some of the different exercise equipment options, but um, I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit more later, but because we're going to be adding a lot of components um, to to based off public comments, we're going to be spending the money that we had on those components um, and, and adding some benches. So the other thing in question five on the questionnaire was uh, we asked people, hey, what other things are missing from, from this playground, right? And so you have this totally illegible piece of information that I put in front of you right here, but hopefully the color-coded things help to clarify um, the message I'm trying to send, which is that um, I highlighted every single area that got the most comments, which is uh, we got eight people asking about swings, Six people asking about, hey, we want to make sure shade is included. Six people saying, hey, we want to make sure there's accessible features. And then dropping a little bit below that, we had some questions like, hey, could we add a zip line? Could we add water play? Could we add teeter-totter or seesaw? And so those are those are the, the main things we heard from those additional comments. Um, as we do with every questionnaire about playgrounds, we like to figure out who's actually taking these questions because it does make a difference. Like on the Ken Mercer Sports Park playground, we had a slight discrepancy between adults and adults. Uh, sorry, adults, not adults and kids um, <laughs> on which was the preferred playground. And we we went with them, thankfully, based off Parks and Rec Commission's recommendation, the the kids preferred playground. And it has proven to be a big big hit. So um, that's exciting. But in this case, mostly people between 31 to 55 took the survey, but we still did get a good chunk of uh, six to 12 year olds. That was online also? It was on posted online. Yeah. On, and on social media. Um, so like I said, 100, 120 people answered this questionnaire, which is really pretty good for um, a, a project like this. So um, now I'm going to talk about the, the, the meat of the, the, the um, presentation here, which is like, hey, what did we do with the concept plan to incorporate public comments? And what we did do is we added uh, belt swings to the 5 to 12 play area. Currently, there's no belt swings out there right now. And we made sure the 5 to 12 play area has the belt swings too, and that the uh, 2 to 5-year-old play area has um, the bucket swings. Yeah. Um Matt, we're looking at on um, page 13, uh, we're looking at 25 and 26. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at 25 and I'm seeing two swings. That's correct. So there's this is the five, this is the player for five to 12 year old children. And so it has two swings and the player for two to five year old children has two swings. That's it on swings. Two swings. Yeah. There's no swings out there right now. Oh, okay. So we, we went from zero to two. That's more than a hundred percent increase. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought I would. Yeah. So, so the thing about all the play equipment, whatever we add in, it means we have to subtract things. So we had a really cool spinning piece of spinning equipment right. that we had to remove to put these swings in, but it's pretty clear from what people said in the questionnaire that, that we should add the swings. And I, I 
played on playgrounds and I know how much everybody likes swings. I was just, uh, I, my nephews were visiting for Thanksgiving and we took them to Ken Mercer and it's like, you know, all the kids were going on the swings and it's even it's, the adults, do. even the adults. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So, um, yeah, so we, we added swings. We, we definitely kept the, the musical features that we have, uh, that we had included and added some, um, we have shade on all the structures, um, we added like the ground ground level features. So like this, this view shows you, these are both musical instruments. So like a xylophone and like a little drum piece. Right. And then we did add monkey bars, which you can't see very well in here, but there's monkey bars in here. And then there's a really significant climbing feature, which is totally different than what, you know, other features we have in the other parks, which was one of the big like draws of this playground design. This is the play area for um, two to five-year-olds. Uh, the previous play area had kind of these like uh, seat areas like with single seats and like a single shade. And we heard from some people, commissioners included, that they were not the, you know, that uh, rate of an option. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Joni. Um, so we took those out and we added a clubhouse, which adds that like at, at a grade play level. Um, we have some sound, like some musical features and like sound features, like talking through the microphone here. Um, there's the little clubhouse. And this shows that we really did. A, I think the designer did a good job of really maximizing the space um, and really getting in a lot of features for the amount of budget we have. And the budget we have is about $300,000. We've added a little bit to that budget with the, the additions we had from public input. And I think we could accommodate that. One thing I did want to bring up, though, is we did definitely look at adding much bigger and more shade, as you could see in this slide right here. But each of those shade structures adds about $15,000. So that's about $30,000 increase. And we think benches is probably a better way to uh, go, especially because on the south side of both these of these playgrounds, there are some mature trees that are going to get much bigger over time. Um, um, uh, Matt, on the, um, it looks like a, a kind of a trellis area and maybe a sandbox or whatever underneath. Uh, in the, in yes. So that's an existing trellis. Oh, okay. And it's existing shaded area, and there is seating in that shaded area too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, because I didn't re remember that. Um, the um, a shade, shade. Um, Joni, I have one more. Okay, one, uh, sorry. Two, two more slides yeah. left, and then we're we're we're, we're, okay. we're done. Um. So the, the next steps are really to uh, this month, uh, update the design per any recommendations you might have as the Parks and Rec Commission. And then we'll finalize the contract with uh, Miracle Play Systems, uh, the contractor. And then January, February, we'll be taking it to council. They'll be the ones that make all the final decisions on uh, based off of your recommendation on what to include and, and, and what, you know, what that cost is gonna be. And then it'll take a uh, winter, spring, like basically the first part of the next year to fabricate the equipment. And we could expect this to be constructed in summer of 2023. And yeah, so that was it. Uh, I, I just wanted to say once again, though, that we are looking for a recommendation on the final design of the playground from the Parks and Rec Commission tonight. So that's really what we're here for and the biggest component of that is whether shade structure or benches and one or the other uh if you saw anything that you didn't like besides that or you really wanted to get included then you, you could you could make a recommendation on whatever you'd like to do but yes we're mostly looking for a recommendation on hey do you think this revised design captures everything <laughs> and and do we want to have we we are planning to add more benches either as part of this project or as a separate project. Right now, benches are about six to eight months out, so we need to order them now. And the, the fabrication of the play equipment, just because of how things are these days, it's going to take at least four months and maybe more than that. Which is why you know we go to council in January, February. We're not going to be constructing till you know probably middle summer. Okay. Um, do any of the commissioners, uh, Lisa, you want to start? You have any questions? 
Um, my one question is, is, is that um, what makes this, I, I, I heard you say that this was a little bit different than maybe some of the others. What makes it different than some of the others? Like why would, why would someone that lives in, uh, I don't know, by Tawny Park come over here? Um, I was just curious. Yeah, so I mean, this is a community park, so we're trying trying to make it feel like a community park. But the the big difference in in this playground is mostly about this play structure that you see right here, this climb cool. structure. So this is this is kind of the marquee um, feature of this park, and this is you know uh, we we have these kind of deck and platform tube slides and stuff we have these kind of everywhere right and uh, and a lot of these other things but it's really this structure that i think makes this kind of a unique park like mission hills has the slide mm -hmm. you know bernal has a zip line this has this climbing structure okay cool that's the only question i have i'll just segue on that that um i think it's important that we that we um add uh, a kind of an element that hasn't been used in other parks i think it's great that we can provide the community a reason to kind of intermingle within other communities and get to know Pleasanton a little bit better. So I think just having a, something in a park that people want to come to because it's not available anywhere else uh, is, a, is a good thing. So um, when I, Joni and I were both at that community meeting and I, I think we both found that people, and I think we both gravitated towards that option one, just because the colors really popped on those uh, elements um, and agreed with uh, hearing the choice of uh, the elements and where the preferences were and that showed up on your document. So, but uh, good job of putting all, all, all that together. The only thing I was going to make comment on is um, I think it's important, as I mentioned before, the, the attendance of commissioners to these parks, uh, listening uh, uh, meetings only because it brings, I think, a good element towards our discussion when we have later discussion and hearing with community out of state. And so as far as attendees, I think it's also for that reason good to list those uh, parks uh, commissioners that attend because we are not attending for ourselves. We are attending in the role of a city commissioner. So so in addition to Matt and Sarah, you could also include, uh, of course, Chuck and Joni. Can, can I ask a question? Because I didn't actually know that there was a, uh, was something going on. Maybe I just missed an email. Maybe I just missed an email. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Mike. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Um, Miracle Play Systems. Have we worked with them before? Yeah. So all four of the firms that uh, submitted quals packages are the firms that we've worked with over the last few years, and we've had good success with. And I, I think that's why they they felt you know, hey, we'll propose on this, and a lot of the other companies that haven't met our expectations didn't propose okay and then um the butterfly i really like uh that's the play structure it's a, right it's climb all over it and that's right I mean, that's pretty awesome i wish i was three years old again <laughs> i could pretend i'm flying a butterfly that's you pretty good awesome. you're good like you that. could ride a butterfly that's right i like that yeah i was pretending Sure. I have a few questions. So for the shade structures, is it possible that they would block any sunlight from the trees in nearby areas? Um, they would not block okay. the trees. So the trees would most likely over shade them um, over time, but they, the way that they'd be installed, it, it wouldn't interfere with the trees. Okay. Um, with option one, would benches be in the budget without removing anything else besides the shade structure? With option one, we think we could accommodate more benches with available money with mm -hmm. the um, the proposed design that you see in front of you right now. And then looking at public comment, would it be easy? Would it, we have the ability to make it easier access to the hillside from the playground? That is a good question. Um, the the playground is to, totally accessible from the hillside. There is a, a large hill mm -hmm. all around this playground, and the kids, uh, as we heard, uh, but from one of the the members that showed up on, on Saturday, uh, that the kids their favorite part of the playground is actually the hill, and not the, the not the playground equipment. Um, so we we don't at this time have any plans for that, but I know we have some issues with the hillside eroding that we need to address at some point in time. Okay, uh, just a comment besides that, but thank you for answering my questions. I think that the butterfly is a good element and the climbing structure will likely attract people from around the city. Thank you. 
Oh, now it's me. Um, okay. The shade structures are those like canvas, or are they going to be a uh, more um, a stronger um, material? So what we're proposing right now is these standard plastic shade structures that we have on a lot of the play equipment. Um, so they have a longer life than the canvas, the like the fabric that you see right here. This fabric has typically like a 10 year warranty on it. And it's similar to what we have at Bernal right now. Okay. Is that similar to the uh, straight shade structure that was at Hanson? park that was set on fire yes okay it wasn't just the shade structure that was set on fire. I, the whole playground was set uh, on fire. yeah i re i realize um but uh and i'm thinking there aren't a lot of people at val vista during certain times of the day so it i i'm sure and i know that there's been graffiti there and other, so I would question um, that using the same uh, type of material might not be advantageous, but I, I don't, you know. Well, we're, we're not proposing that we put in that type of shade structure because we, we don't have the budget. So okay. um, you, you don't even have to worry about it, Joni. Okay, okay. Um, and I love the colors, purple and gold. Hey, I got it. <laughs> so um, we are looking for a um, vote. So yeah, how would you like for the pad for so just There's be sure to ask for public comment first before you so typically okay. question I, public I was comment just saying point of information because I thought that was the question round and then okay I because I didn't actually give any comments. Yeah, so we just need to uh, look for, I know we don't have any members of the public here, but if there's any online. Okay, you... and we don't seem to have any. So Lisa, you have a question? I was just gonna say that I would um, move for option one. I really um, liked option one and the colors. Um, I thought that addition of the swings was really good. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I totally agreed with every, comment that I think came in from the online survey. So um want to do a motion. Yeah. I move to recommend to the um, city council we move forward with option one. Do we need a um, any comment on on certain amenities, whether we leave or leave leave them out or, or include them? Such as if you have comments. Shade structure. Yes. And do we want to maybe make a comment on shade structure whether we should include that cost or or not include the cost on shade structure? We, my, my preference would be that we not incur that cost and, and have that go towards the amenities and I'm sure we have everything in place for. But I, I think that they were in, oh, turn your microphone on. Just get closer. Just get closer. Get closer. You're not close enough. Did you have a point of information, Heidi? Oh, okay. Um, you wanted to say that we want to amend for uh, no shade structure or more benches? Um, I think benches he's going to incorporate either way, correct? If you would like to make a motion to include benches, you can, but we do plan to move forward with the design um, without the shade shade fabric structures um, and add some more benches. So per the city recommendation. Then. Yeah. Okay. Good. So are you um, just saying to go? And I'll, and I'll second that. So Second. would you like to repeat your the, motion? The motion is to just move forward with option one. Correct. No changes. Okay. okay. Thank you. And Chuck, a second to that? Yes. Uh, roll call. Thank you. If, if you, does anybody want to make comments? Sorry. I think we've. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. And Commissioner Burbridge is not here anymore. So Commissioner Rittmuller? Yes. Commissioner Dackett? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chairperson Fields? Yes. Um, I've got a question on the 
staff report and an element of that. Should I ask that at the end uh, or would be appropriate to ask it now as far as specifically with city selection committee? For which what item? Are we talking about? Uh, this, 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 this item and then regarding the city selection committee. Um, the question I had is, is, rep, uh, is that city selection committee? Is that has to do with just topics that are park, uh, park equipment related, or is that city selection committee to handle other elements within the city that require? So on each RFQ, there is typically city staff members and sometimes outside members that sits on a committee to choose the best qualified consultant or contractor. So each selection committee is typically different. So the the playground selection committee is going to be different than potentially like a, a you know, for building a trail and we want to get a trail consultant or if we're doing some street renovations and we, we want to get somebody that special, specializes in, you know, green streets or something to that effect. My, my, my comment would have been, or my request would be that maybe there'd be a consideration of adding a parks and rec commissioner to the playground uh, selection committee. I think that would be a important voice that could be heard uh, but again if it's city staff if, if those interested in keeping that to city staff i would understand that as well so in, in this case we we do keep it to city staff um but we could talk about your comment with amongst other city staff and determine what to do as we move forward thank you matt uh onward and upward uh, approval Professional Services Agreement with Amador Valley, uh, Livermore Valley Historical Society for Museum on Main operations for a total of 190,800 annually. 109, 80, 800 annually. Great. So thank you very much. I'm really excited that we have Sarah here with us tonight, the executive director of the museum, in case you have any questions for her. But we um, are very pleased with our partnership with the museum. It provides a great service to the community, educational-wise, programming-wise, um, and they help us with a lot of events and displays throughout the city, which is wonderful. So this agreement is an ongoing partnership. Um, this is a new five-year agreement um, that we will bring back to you annually, um, but this is the first year. So we would recommend as staff that we continue this partnership and that we keep supporting our fantastic museum on Maine so that we have that service here in the city. I'm happy to answer any questions and Sarah is also here for any questions that you might have. Um, okay, um, Kara, you wanna start? Do you have no any questions, questions from me? Okay, Mike? Um, just, uh, just a, is there a way to get an understanding just Holistically, what with that $109,800 accounts for? Yes. So it's used um, to assist with staff salaries, day to day operational expenses, public programs, and supplies. The museum also does a lot of fundraising to support their operations as well. Great. Um, Chuck, do you have any questions? Uh, <laughs> no other than. Uh, Joni is where I was served on this on the board of the museum for 13, 14 years. And uh, I do feel that um, when the city made the decision initially to um, fund um, the museum for the educational piece of their operations, and then also initially included um, a, a, a large responsibility of providing the education element at the Adobe, um, uh, I thought it was a, uh, a good decision on the city's part. And uh, now that we are, this the museum has grown to the point where we are now serving a larger element of the community, uh, I think it's a, a, even a better investment on the city's, city's part. Lisa? No questions. Okay, um, I, I will chime in on this. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, Sarah, for uh, coming. I know you have a bad cold. Um, I would I would like to um, just give you a little. Chuck and I both have been uh, on the board for the museum. I was president, oh, many, many, many years ago when we first started making the changes in the museum, making it a much more forward 
um, thinking and much uh, better outreach to uh, the community. One of the things that is not on our uh, list here, and I reread it, is uh, the um, Ed Kenny election um, lecture series, and that is a unbelievable um, series that's um, uh, with the help of the city. They um, give give the museum the uh, firehouse for their, and uh, actually uh, the Amador Theater was also used several times. Um, I would encourage uh, people to um, sign up for the lecture series. We have Golda Meir, uh, Frederick Douglass, Robert Kennedy, um, Robert Frost, Mary Shelley, Winston Churchill. These are called Chautauquan um, um, presentations. And these people come in and they have the history of these different people. This brings a, a multitude of, of history to people in a very short period of time. It would be great for any history classes uh, for the high schools. Um, to do, and there are um, different levels of costs. So um, I have seen, and Chuck has seen, the blossoming of this uh, facility and its outreach. And I think the city of Pleasanton has done a marvelous job in uh, helping um, partnering with the um, Historical Society. Um, and Ed Kinney was one of our former mayors. So um, I, I would um, hope that we can have a, any more discussion is fine, but I think uh, if we can go ahead and uh, ask for a motion. Public comment first. So if you can just ask anyone to raise their hand on Zoom if they're interested in speaking and then comments and then a motion. Okay. And do I see any? I don't. There are no speakers. Can you repeat that, Alan? There's no speakers in Zoom right now. Thank you. So we don't have any speakers. Are there any comments? Anybody have any comments that they would like to share? Okay, do we hear a motion to accept the contract that uh, between the city and the historical society? I'd like to go forward and make a motion that we approve the professional service agreement uh, with the Amador the Moore Valley Historical Society, or, the, or otherwise known as actually the only no, name we're known as, which is Museum on Main Operations for 109800 annually, and for a total of $549,000 over the five-year term of the agreement. I second that. We have a motion on the floor um, that we accept the contract agreement, service agreement, uh, with the uh, Museum on Main. We have a second by Kara. Do uh, we have a roll call? Yes. Oops, that's my my list here. Commissioner Ritmula? Yes. Deckett? Here. Yes. Brown? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Chairperson Fields? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that has been passed. And thank you, Sarah, for coming. Um, uh, and Sarah is the new director of the Museum on Main. A well-deserved promotion. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you very, very much. Next. Um, okay, we are a recommend city council approval, first amendment to agreement with American Cemetery Maintenance and Burial Services for the Pleasanton um, Pioneer Cemetery in an amount not to exceed 331500 Um Heidi? 
Thank you, Joni. So we changed vendors last year. You all recommended approval of a new contract um, with American Cemetery Maintenance and Burial, and they have been doing an excellent job. They're a great partner. Um, our customer service has improved significantly um, and efficiencies have improved. It is um, an 18 month long contract. So that's something of note. That is why it is more expensive, not just because of the increase in per her burial fees, but also because we are trying to get this onto a fiscal year cycle. All of our other cemetery contracts, our landscape maintenance and our uh, mortuary services run on a fiscal year cycle. Um, having them on a calendar year and a fiscal year means that we have to update the fees twice a year rather than once a year. It's much easier to do once a year um, when we do the CPI update and then also the updates based on cost per, per service. Um, the cemetery does run as an enterprise fund um, meaning that as costs go up, we need to increase our fees to cover those costs. So you will see that as your next item, but this item I would recommend um, that you would uh, recommend to city council that we approve this 18 month long contract with the um, American Cemetery Services. They've been excellent. I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Um, Tara, let's go with you. No questions from me. Okay, Mike. Nothing right now. Chuck. This is a simple one. No, no questions. No questions. You answered it. They're doing an excellent job. That was going to be my question. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any comments uh, from the uh, Zoom? If, if there's anybody Zoom. No. So, any members of the public wishing to speak, please raise your hand on Zoom. There are person field. There's no speakers. Thank you. Uh, we have no um, public that wants to speak on this. Do we have a motion to uh, approve this contract? I move to recommend to the city council to approve the first amendment to the professional service agreement from American Cemetery Maintenance and Burial for Ground Maintenance and Burial Services for the Pleasanton Pioneers at Cemetery at an amount not to exceed 331,500. Do I have a second? I'll second. Do we have any comments from the commission? None. So, um Go ahead, roll call. <laughs> roll call again. Uh, Commissioner Ritmula? Yes. Commissioner Deckert? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. Chairperson Fields? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We are moving right along. Okay. Let's go to review and approve parks and recreation commission meetings. We need to do the fee schedule first, oh. item eight. Okay. It's another cemetery. More money. Finals, the final cemetery. More okay. Uh, recommend city council approval first amendment to agreement with American. One below there. One below. There we go. I have them all checked off and <laughs> uh, recommend city council adopt a resolution amending the master fee schedule for the Pleasanton Pioneer Cemetery. Do we have any discussion, Lisa? I'm happy to give you a short presentation. Okay. Um, if you take a look at your agenda packet, you'll see that our prices that we are recommending are directly correlated to the contractor fee increases. So this is a second fee schedule update that we have done this year. Um, the first one we did based on CPI and um, our mortuary service contracts going up. Um, so this one is our second fee increase of the year. Again, why we're hoping to get to the fiscal year cycle for all of our contracts. Um, but you can see that the price increases are directly related to the contractor fee increases. Um, this doesn't take into account all of the extra fees for grounds maintenance now that it's not so much a pioneer cemetery anymore, but we're landscaped and have some flowers and irrigation and things up there. So staff would recommend that we update these fees as um, listed in the resolution, which is your attachment one, and that we recommend that city council adopt this resolution. Happy to answer any questions. No questions. Chuck, 
Uh, no, I just make a comment that uh, for any of us who've been in town for quite some time and remember what the Pioneer St Cemetery in the dilapidated state it became and when uh, community groups like Rotary and others just try to collectively you know, maintain it with really not much success, um, uh, I just have to really commend the city and its contractors for bringing the Pioneer Stadium Cemetery to kind of a state-of-the-art, almost almost a state-of-the-art cemetery today, uh, at least a lot more attractive for people who visit their loved ones to, to visit now. So otherwise, I'll go ahead, unless there's questions. Mike, have any questions? We have to be sure to have public comment before we make any motions. So questions first, then public comment, then comments. Yeah, no comments. Thank you. Kira, no comments. Um, Okay, do we have any um, public comments or questions? Jefferson Fields, there are no speakers. Thank you. Okay, um, I would just like um, to make a couple of comments. Um, and, and Heidi, um, I think, I, I don't know if the, everyone, it's into this one or if um the um mortuary they deal with parts of this they do the burial services for us and plot sales okay so they manage the plot inventory they take all of the funds for the plots um they help the grieving families through the process um or pre-need families through the process um and then these folks uh american cemetery they dig the actual graves and they maintain the, it's not really landscaping, but they maintain the grasses around that. They maintain the headstones, they clean the headstones, they repair the headstones. Um, so, and then, and then there's a, a Terra landscape who land, who maintains the landscaping, not around the grave sites. So all of the hanging baskets, everything that's irrigated, and then the exterior parts of that. Okay. Cemetery. So when, um, the mortuary meets with the pair of uh, people um, they're informed at that time that these um, burial plots the cost is. yes so we share these fees with um, with Graham Hitch who's our mortuary service provider and burial provider and these are the fees that they use when they're charging folks and um, do we what what is their percentage so their contract was approved recently. So their per, it's not a percentage. It's a per service fee okay. that goes to them. I don't have those okay. numbers right now, but I could get them for you if you're interested. I believe it was like six months ago that we, we did it. Yes. Yeah. I, okay. It seems like, um, like you said, we're trying to get everybody on the same page, the same time, which would um, uh, make the ability of the uh, commission a lot easier to understand and, and deal with. It certainly does cost a lot of money to die. <laughs> uh, okay, do we have a motion? Um, would anybody like to do a motion? Um, accepting the fee schedule um, with um, the American Cemetery Maintenance people. Go ahead and make the motion that we recommend the City Council the adoption of a resolution amending the master fee schedule for the Portland Pioneer Cemetery, as stated. Second. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Um, Edith. Okay. Commissioner Rittmuller? Yes. Ava? Commissioner Decker? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. Chairperson Fields? Yes. Okay. Now we Boy, get we've to never do. had so many motions. I know. <laughs> I know. I really packed this agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did. She did. Okay. So now our last thing is to approve the meeting schedule for 2023. And I just like to comment, um, I had put that we should discuss August 10th potential cancellation. Um, that was thinking that we may try to go dark in the month of August, but that will not be the case. We were looking at potentially some council chamber remodeling, but we can 
find oh, another location if that happens. So why, why you were picked on. Um, but anyway, so we do not need to discuss cancellation if you guys want to have that meeting or if you want to take a break and you want to all know you can go on vacation now that now that um, absences are going to be monitored much more closely and potentially, you know, have impacts on people's participation in the commission. Mm -hmm. If you do want to pick a month where you all want to take your vacations, you can do that as well. Um, that's up to you. <laughs> But also during the year, there's typically one meeting a month that the city councils, the city councils, because we just don't have the agenda items to support a meeting, correct? That's correct. But we don't always know in advance what that month is going to be. <laughs> every year, every year that I've been on, we've had at least one meeting that the city has decided to cancel. Yes, but not a consistent month of the year, unfortunately. If we could predict the month, that would be nice. Uh, it's a consideration as far as taking another month that we're making a decision up front. To, True. You know, yes. Okay, well, since my last meeting will be in April, which is being canceled, uh, and they're celebrating it by the, having the mayor's award dinner. <laughs> it's all for you, Joni. It's all for me. Um, does anyone have any concerns about the dates? And Kara, I don't, uh, you are still going to be our... Yeah, I don't graduate till the spring of not next year, but the year after that. Okay, very good. Very good. Um, so does anyone have any concerns? Any, no cruises, no. Yeah. This, doesn't require, this doesn't require motion, does it? No. So no concerns. I, mean, uh, I, I know one day I won't be there, but that's okay. I mean, I not a concern uh, and i'm fine with keeping all the dates um as stated and then we can decide at some other time oh, so say 2022 so i'm assuming we're making a motion sorry. that's my fault and 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 several of us who just missed it it's hard to change years well i thought that was just a i was just i thought you're just showing us what we did they just want me no the dates <laughs> the dates are correct so if yes. you look at the dates next year, sure. I just failed to get the year correct. And we'll probably do so until about February of next year. Mm -hmm. I said, and I'll probably do yeah. so until about February of next year. I'll keep writing 22. Okay. Well, I would just make a, a correction here that all of these dates are in 2023. Mm -hmm. And um, no motion. No motion. Uh, we, I seem to be all happy with it all. And so let's go on to um, commission meeting, committee meetings, uh, bicycle, pedestrian, and trails committee. Not. Nope. Community of character. Yep. And I would like to, I'm looking at my, I wrote this down. Um, the community of character will be hosting again this year for the first time in, uh, in person, uh, because of COVID the Martin Luther King breakfast, which will be held on the 23rd of January at the double tree, uh, which used to be the Hilton. Um, and that it, it it's a Valley, Tri Valley um, breakfast. Uh, Dr. Uh, Will Nelson, who is one of the assistant superintendents, will be the speaker. Um, and it's $40 a person. The um, it, it include we highlight people that are uh, leaders in the community for Livermore. Dublin and Pleasanton. And I don't mean um, mayors or um, elected officials. Uh, we're talking about people in the community that make a difference in everyone's daily life. And those, um, the announcements of those people will be um, later in the year. Um, as we go on before. So it's the week, the Monday after the following week after Martin Luther King official day. So I encourage people to, uh, it's $40.
We have lots of people that have been former recipients. We have uh, mayors and um, police chiefs and different uh, officials from each city that attend. And it's quite nice. So I encourage you to come. And it's uh, we do make money off of it for our scholarship program. So next is the Heritage Tree Review Board. And um, I don't think- We do not have okay. that one coming out next week. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, Public Art Selection uh, Subcommittee. Uh, the murals that were to be um, um, displayed at the um, Cultural Arts Center have been uh, delayed because of because the project costs more than it was originally uh, decided and the framing is um, more than it was originally. And Heidi, framing you wanna... will be done by staff. I think you all got an email. We sent you all an email update on this. Um, okay. Yeah, so the framing is now gonna be done by staff so that it'll, um, it won't damage the building. There was some concern that the original frame that had been selected may cause damage to that building. So our operations services staff is constructing the frame um, so that it doesn't do damage. So a little bit of staffing impacts, a little bit of increased costs, you know, everything post COVID, pre, during COVID, as we emerge from COVID, wherever we are in COVID, I'm not sure, <laughs> um, but everything's a little, and so a little more challenging. So it will be in the spring or um, early summer before that happens. Um, who's our sports council person? Me. Oh, okay, Chuck. And just for a quick uh, understanding on my part. So are you the lead on bikes? I know you're on bike peds. You're also lead. But, um, uh, Mike will be that. But right now you're the lead on that. Yes. You're community character and you're lead on public arts. Yeah. Okay. I just I didn't know if um, I forgot what everybody was. On. I thought that was me. What? On public arts. And is that not true? Yeah. You guys switched well, last time around. So Lisa's but the lead. Yeah. Been a, but yeah. right, there wasn't anything yeah. I was going to. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's totally fine. Uh, okay. Sports Council, we haven't met since the last meeting. We are going to have a meeting in January, though. That group just meets quarterly. So, And Heidi, are there other um, reports on any meetings, conferences, seminars? None from me. Matters initiated by the commission? This would be a time when there's any agenda items that you'd like to see. Um, we have... Coming to you in January now, we'll tell you a little bit more about the, we'll, it'll be an informational report about why we're pausing adult softball for a season. Um, we are not, um, anyway, we can't keep talking about that. We'll bring you our annual report in January um, for the library and recreation department. I know you guys um, have asked about doggy bags and Cubby's dog park restroom. Uh, it's a big staff lift to get those projects forward to you. And um, so I will I will coordinate with our operations services department to see when when those might be coming forward. Any other items that you might be interested in? It? Would someone like to make an, a, a motion to adjourn? Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Happy I will holidays. second that. Happy yeah. holidays, guys. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yay. And I would like to say it's been a pleasure. And I haven't made one meeting correct all the way through. <laughs> We're all human. Okay.